Hey everyone, going into my second week of three here in Brockeye, and because the family's left, it means it's time for me to get back to work. So waking up somewhat on time, getting to work around six this morning, and as you know, I'm a really big fan of making sure you focus on your one thing in the morning. So even though this is gonna sound crazy, I haven't actually checked our base camp or email for the past seven days, I'm actually going to start my first workday off writing a YouTube ad because it's just so easy to get really caught up in all of the administrative stuff or things like banks freezing your accounts, which I'll tell you about later, which is part of the reason I haven't vlogged in such a long time. So for me, it is time to actually shake off some of that sand and get back to work. just like that two hours zips by so two hours i was able to get three youtube ads done and the only reason i was able to is because i always go back to previous ads that i've written or any anything i've written for the product and try and pull from it so it's one of those things where i pretty much never start with a blank page i either use a template that we've created or a template from a course or book that i purchased in the past and then I always continue to build on it. So one of the things that really helps me with copywriting is never starting from scratch. And of course the big downside is a lot of the copy that I write winds up sounding pretty much the same. And that's because I kind of reuse and retool so much of it. But the other thing too is that doesn't really matter because you don't know what's going to work until you actually run ads. And the advantage of doing things this way is as we continue to run ads, we'll find formulas that work. And then of course, more formulas that don't work. And then I just keep building off the ones that have worked in the past. And so it actually winds up being a better strategy long-term than actually just starting from scratch because you would be, I've always been shocked, especially with some of our products where I think this is gonna be a smash hit or I'm recording something or writing something. I'm like, you know what, this is gonna be awesome. And then it just totally, totally bombs. And it's just one of those things, copywriting is just a numbers game, especially when it comes to copywriting for advertising. So now that I've gotten my most important task out of the way, I probably, uh, ideally I would go for another hour or so, but the breakfast buffet ends at 10 a.m. So it's time for me to actually go get some free grub. <laughs> Well, as usual, things go wrong and you don't find out until it's too late to fix it. Although it was blistering, blistering sun. It was just after 12 o'clock and the breeze here pretty much stops around 12. So from six in the morning till about 11 is the best time to be outside and be doing any sort of activities because after that you will just burn unless you already have really, really dark skin and um, I don't because I've been stuck inside so much. So I burned really easily and my sunscreen was about to expire. So for whatever reason, this lav mic did not work with the GoPro. I have no idea why I picked it up because I knew if I used any sort of other mic, the waves and the wind would be way too loud and too windy. And for whatever reason, it didn't work. So that's a tech headache for another day. But what I was originally trying to say was it was really cool going through base camp and this is an absolute first for me, three years into this business, is being able to see team members actually working together to solve problems without my input at all. And so there's there's really two, two things I contribute this to. I'm gonna pat myself on the back a little bit here. But number one, as entrepreneurs, just in general, you really, really have to kind of hound in the point to whoever you hire that what their responsibilities are and that they are allowed to make their own decisions. I think that's something that I have struggled with in the past, especially because you've probably seen some of the videos were very structured and I'm very OCD, but you really, really, as a leader are responsible 
for letting people know that they are they can be responsible for their tasks and they're allowed to try new things and of course make mistakes. So that's number one. And then of course, number two, you have to hire and train people who are actually willing to take that step because there are, I'm just straight out say it, there are a lot of people we hired who have no interest in taking responsibility. And it didn't, they, they, some of them stayed for years, some of them stayed for a couple of weeks. And it really is a type of person that is one of those qualities that's really hard. It's not really a skill. It's just that type of person either shows up because they want to learn and they want to take more responsibility or they just want to have their job, show up, do the couple things they want to do and then move on. So luckily right now we have a team of people who actually are excited to grow and willing to grow and are okay with taking on the responsibility and being creative. And I think ultimately a lot of the decisions that were made in my absence and conversations that happened in my absence wound up being better than if I had been in that conversation and that is where you want to be because you always want to have people who are better at whatever the job is than you are, especially when it comes to um, creative work. So I think that's probably what I was trying to say when I was walking along the beach sweating my butt off. That was a really, really dumb idea. I definitely, if you're here pretty much anywhere in the Philippines at 12 o'clock, it's going to just be instant, instant sweat and you're going to have to change your shirt way too much information. With that, I came back here, had some pizza, got back to work. So now we'll get back to whatever the vlog was supposed to be. I, I hold on to this storm cause I need to be swept away, swept away. I, And this right here is a beautiful, beautiful site. No pings, no notifications, cleared all of them. It only took one day to catch up on everything. Okay, well, maybe everything would be a bit of an exaggeration. So inside of Basecamp, I typically follow a rule. If I can't respond to the message or finish the review of whatever the work is in 15 to 30 minutes or less, then I'll go ahead and actually create a new task. So I do have quite a few review tasks because we just recently hired some writers and it's gonna take me at least two or three hours, but luckily they're working on content that isn't kind of going to come out until I think August or July. So I have a little bit of wiggle room there, but it does feel pretty good to just be able to go through Basecamp, answer everyone's questions, and now I can finally start to plan out my week. But before I do that, we should probably just address why I didn't vlog for over seven months. Now, this is actually my third or fourth take here. And originally I was going to make this a series because what I've gone through, this started in November of 2020, has just been so stressful and so destructive to the forward momentum of our business. And not vlogging is one of the many things that uh, was a result of this problem of not being able to access our money or money disappearing or accounts straight up being frozen. So what I thought I'd do is I would talk about the, I'm not going to reveal the name of the bank. <laughs> I don't know what's in your wallet, but I'm not going to go saying names of banks here, but I will, will, but I will talk about WISE, uh, you previously called TransferWISE in this particular video, and then five things I recommend you do if you decide to use WISE. I'm a huge fan of WISE, not only from a business pers perspective, paying uh, employees overseas because the fees are super cheap and it's super fast. I can actually get money to some of our contractors within 24 hours and it's way better than Payoneer, PayPal, Upwork, or Fiverr. And then of course, also on the travel side, you can actually get a debit card so you can withdraw local currency up to 200 bucks and then it's a 2% fee after that. And of course, that's approximate, so $200 US. I don't know what it is elsewhere. So I digress. So this is going to be a quick little story of how I was potentially on a watch list and then how to actually use TransferWise safely so that you don't go through the absolute nightmare we've had to deal with. Again, I don't know what bank you use. Uh, luckily, the bank that I just really don't like anymore is not opening business accounts anymore and I can't even add signers to the account. So you are safe from accidentally doing business with this bank, although I digress. So this whole problem started 
November 2020. I'm doing payroll. It's a Monday afternoon. It's a Monday afternoon. And for some strange reason, I'm paying one of our new hires. He'd been he'd been with us about a month, and it was $116.13. And for some reason, the transfer didn't go through. I went, oh, okay, that's weird. I'll just go back. But when I went back to do the transfer again, transfer wise, wouldn't let me use a debit card and they wouldn't let me use an ACH transfer and I was only allowed to use wire transfers. Now that's a big deal for me being in the Philippines and having to stay up till 10 o'clock at night to call the bank in New York, tell them I want to do a wire and then I have to wait for a confirmation call back, which means I had anywhere from four to seven nights where I had to stay up all night waiting for that phone call. Uh, I won't get into that because that's just me complaining and the bank the bank just stinks, right? So long story short, uh, it took three weeks for me to get that $116 to TransferWise so that they would uh, potentially allow me to use debit cards. Now, the reason that this happened is because when you transfer money into TransferWise, it will automatically apply the money to the most recent transaction. So even though the 116 is where I wanted the money to go, it wound up going someplace else. So I just knew, but when you follow the steps I'm about to say, you won't have this problem at all. Now, the problem I ran into is the, a, the actual ACH organization or whatever told TransferWise that my account was frozen. And it's the same code you get if you're doing something with any sort of nefarious international illegal activities. So that I could have been an arms dealer for all they knew, right? And sending money to this particular country, even though it was just a couple hundred dollars, the bank completely flipped out. Now the problem, the bank didn't tell me that for three months. For three months, I went back and forth between TransferWise and the bank, and no one could answer the question as to why the, the transfer didn't work. And eventually, I the support with WISE was upgraded and I got someone to send me this screenshot showing that it said account frozen. It had a bunch of other numbers that I won't show because I have no idea what they meant. But the solution came as a total fluke because at the time I was actually trying to get my debit card here to the Philippines, which was a whole nother mess. And it was, a, it was about to expire. And someone who I was on the phone with, it was like 11 o'clock at night. It was the I think I was on call number five by that point. And she asked me, oh, uh, did anyone talk to you about this note on your account? And I said, what, what note? And it turned out that they wanted to know why I was sending money to that particular country. And again, this is three months after the initial thing. So this is January, 2021, where I still don't have the ability to properly pay my employees. And because my debit card expired with the same silly bank, I was essentially running out of cash inside of TransferWise. And I physically had no way to get money into the country or money into TransferWise without staying up all night doing those transfers, which of course, paying your team members has to, has to be at the top of your priority list. So. That's part of why no vlogs happened. So it wasn't till the end of February where I had full use of WISE again. And unfortunately, my bank wound up freezing my account again for a completely different reason where they just wanted to know, they literally froze my account because they wanted to know what business we were in. And then they unfroze it, like the whole thing. And just, just, stop, just stop payments everywhere. It was a month to recover. And of course we got fees up the wazoo because this bill wasn't paid and this money didn't come in. And so long story short, want to share five things that I recommend you do with TransferWise or WISE in general, or any sort of any of these things to avoid the absolute expletive mess that I had to deal with. So I've got it right here and believe it or not, that was the short version. I, I told you this is take three or four. I, I tried to make it short, but I could see I'm talking for over five minutes, just complaining my, <laughs> complaining off. So number one, if, when you're using TransferWise or you're using a PayPal or Payoneer or any of these services, they all offer you to have, most of them offer you to have a balance with them. Now, the only exception here is Fiverr and Upwork because you're using a credit card, you're already paying ridiculously high fees. You don't have to worry about that. But anything that you're doing on your own, pay people through your balance. I know it's annoying. It's an accounting nightmare because we have a we have to we have to track trans, transfers now. But what you want to do is take the money from your bank, 
transfer it into Wise, PayPal, Payoneer, and then pay whoever you're paying. And the reason that you need to do this is because these people in the, the middle, Wise, Payoneer, or PayPal, they're not gonna freak out when you send money to the countries that they do business with because they understand what's going on. Banks over here, and of course I'm in the US, it might be uh, harder or easier depending upon where you are, banks in the US, they're, they're archaic. They don't get it. So all they see is this guy keeps sending hundreds of dollars to this guy in this country. Hmm, they must be doing something terrible. Like that, that's, that seems to be the, the logic. And, and there was no explanation as to why the bank decided to freeze me on that with that particular country, especially since how many countries we send money to because we literally have people all over the globe. So that's number one, always use your own balance to pay off other people. Number two, I recommend having at least three different bank accounts. Now, there were some stupid legal reasons and uh, something that needed to expire at the end of 2020 in order for us to move forward with opening other bank accounts. That's really why we were just handcuffed for a while, but I do recommend having at least three. There are a lot of online business banks now that will allow you to open an account with just a few thousand dollars and just spread out your eggs because you have no idea idea how quickly the best bank on your list can go to the absolute worst overnight. It was, it, uh, we were really happy with that bank until this happened. And I don't know, maybe they just want us to leave. That could be a two because they don't open new accounts anymore. Now, the next thing is if you do use TransferWise, keep in mind that there is actually a transfer time of four days. So when I pay someone here on a Monday and they receive their paycheck on Tuesday, well, even though TransferWise has sent that has has sent that money off, they might actually send money before they've received it from your account. And so this is how they make things go really this is how they do transfers really fast, but that's also why they have to be really really vigilant and strict when it comes to not payments, which is why my TransferWise account just stopped working because they're not going to send money ahead of time if they think the ACH or my debit cards have problems, which of course was why I just hate that bank now, right? So that's something you definitely wanna keep in mind. And if this ever does happen to you and you do break that rule, you do need to be aware that WISE will drain all of your balances, personal and business, in order to cover a transfer that did not work. Because something that happened over the course of the past seven months is we sent off $5,000 to a security deposit for the place we're currently living. And the money arrived in the, in the proper account here, but the money didn't come out of our account in the States. And so what did WISE do? They looked at all the balances of the other currencies that we had sitting around. One of them happened to be the Filipino current, the Filipino peso, which we were saving for to, you know, of course, pay immigration fees. And they just took that and threw it towards that 5,000. And that whole mess actually wound up costing $20,000. Literally, I threw $20,000 at that problem and I just could not get money into the country. It was, it was absolutely ridiculous. So all that to say, make sure when you're paying outside and you're using one of these services like Wise, Payoneer, PayPal, please, please, please put the money in the balance and then ship it out. And you're going to essentially skip all of the problems that I've had over the past seven months. And finally, when it comes to the bank memo line, I can't really get into this, but just leave it blank. It's if you need to know what the money was sent for or what you're sending the money for, go ahead and just make a personal note. You don't have to write anything on there. And I'm very, very confident that I'm not going to get in trouble by not writing anything on there. Obviously, I'm not giving you legal advice. Uh, but as far as I know, uh, writing something on that memo line is more likely to cause you headache than actually help you in the long run. So hopefully you found that somewhat valuable. I just really needed to get this off my chest because it has been a huge, huge stopgap and it has just been an absolute nightmare. I'm happy to be in such a beautiful place like this. I figured it was a good time to start vlogging, especially since we have full use of our TransferWise account, our WISE account now, and they've been incredibly gracious and helpful. I don't have anything bad to say about them now, and that's part of the reason I was told to wait to make sure I knew who the actual 
problem was. So thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and comment below with your Barakai questions or your wise questions. I'm still reading and replying to every single one. Lots more vlogs now that I am out of this mess and I can actually access our bank accounts because we opened, we just went crazy opening a bunch of them. I think we have five or six now. So we're covered. Until the next, keep building the business you love.